So Besiata Dishmaya, we're dedicating the shiur also Lema and success in the surgery of Binyamin Ben Hinda Betoch Shar Olamo Israel. And Rabenu is telling us in Torah 36, part Vav. Rabbi Nathan is adding in the end of the Torah. עוד מצאתי, another thing I found, מכתביית קודש של אדוננו, מורנו ורבנו, זיכרונו לברכה, from the holy handwrite of our Rebbe, our master, our teacher, רבנו הקדוש, מעניין התורה הזאת, on that Torah, בשינוי לשון קצת, written little bit differently, והנייר היה קרוע חציו, and also the paper was torn a little bit, Rabbi Nathan making all of that scene alive. Rabbi was alive. Rabbi is alive. And what that was written and what that left, I copied. And that's what that was written. Tzofnat Paneach. Tzofnat Paneach. Tzofnat Paneach. First words of Rabbeinu in the Ilula of Yosef HaTzadik is Tzofnat Paneach. We said, what? Yom Also, it's a complete day. Also birthday, also your site. You see, we said Rabbeinu is alive and Rabbeinu is alive. Tzofnat Paneach. How much we need to have that simple faith in Chachamim. When a person has faith in Chachamim, he can achieve what the Chachamim was talking about, but if he doesn't believe in the Chachamim, how he can follow them, how he can count on them, and then to accomplish, and then to achieve what they're talking about. When Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Bender came to Eretz Yisrael, it's written that there were much few Hasid of Reslev, much you could count them. If you're going to see that in the in the old books of all the books of Hasid of Reslev, Rabbi Shmuel Horowitz, in telling few friends. Less than a minion in Jerusalem, maybe three, four in Tveria and Sfat. And this is it. Rabbi Levi Yitzchak Bender came, started to give shiurim, and actually everyone were counting on him. Rabbi Eliyahu Chaim Ruzhin, he testified on him that he is going to be the, the one that holds all of the wisdom, that he was mamash, helping, meshamesh, chachamim, and especially Rabbi Avram ben Rab Nachman in Uman for years, and he was Chazan in the Klois, so everyone was counting on him. And then he came to Eretz Israel, to Jerusalem, and immediately in the beginning he lived, lived in Lifta, in one of those broken houses in Lifta. And then he abandoned that house because he rather to live here. He rather to live here close to, to, the, to the friends, to Anash, to the Hasid Breslev. So even though that he had a wonderful house over there, he dropped it and went here to live here in Masharim, in Batum Garim. And then he started to give shiurim classes and tens and then hundreds of Hasidim started to gather and to come and people from other Hasiduyot were testifying on Rabbi Levitz Bender that he was huge, that he is righteous and on and on. And then by that the Hasidut of Breslev grew developed a lot. And now you see that after Rav Berland and the Marosh and the Rav Kenning and the Rav Shalom and other Rav Gudlevsky, leaders of Breslev, Talmidei Chachamim, huge, that all of them are students of, of Rav Levi Yitzchak Bender and other righteous people from that generation of 50 years ago, 100 years ago. And you see today that only two women in Rosh Hashanah are coming almost 40,000 people. And you see that it's growing and growing. And it's only because that people are throwing their wisdom and counting on what the tzaddikim said. Rav Shalom said, told us now in Shabbos that he felt ill, you know, that we were praying on him. And he said that nothing helped him until that one day he decided, today I'm going to do half an hour thanks. To Hashem Midbarach. He said, I'm thanking Hashem Midbarach always, but nothing helped. And he said, then I decided to thank Hashem Midbarach for 30 minutes, like that I'm telling the students. And I said, I'm going to do that. 
And he was thanking Hashem Yitbarach for half an hour, half an hour, 30 minutes, on the clock, on the watch. For 30 minutes he was praising Hashem, thanking Hashem, and he explained, he said, what it means you should cancel your opinion, your will, to the will of Hashem Yitbarach. He said that if you're not happy with your condition, with what that you have, it means that you're still arguing with Hashem. You're still in machloket, you're still in arguments with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Hashem doesn't want you to get married yet, so accept it. Say thank you, I don't want to get married also. Hashem doesn't want you to have children. Say to Hashem Yitbarach, I agree with you. Hashem Yitbarach, I, you don't want me to have children, I don't want to have children too. And when it's still hard for you, it means that you're still arguing with Hashem. Still you're not accepting on yourself what that Hashem wants for you. And Rav Shalom explained, where all the judgments and suffering are coming because you have arguments with Hashem, because you're fighting with Hashem. If you're one with Hashem, if you're canceling your opinion, your will to the will of Hashem Yitbarach, no more judgments. Who's got the judgments? Who are the mekatreg? Who are that one that is fighting? It's the angels that they are jealous, they're, they're fighting for the honor, the respect of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. For Him they're fighting. And because the, the person is sinning or doing things against Hashem Yitbarach, so there are judgments on Him. On Moshe Rabbeinu there is no judgments. The judgments are on the enemies. On the righteous people there is no judgments. Why sometimes we can see judgments also on righteous people? Because the Kadosh Baruch Hu is medakdek with the tzaddikim kechut asara. Sevivav nisara meod surrounds the Kadosh Baruch Hu. There is a huge storm mamash. And the Kadosh Baruch Hu is medakdek kechut asara. On a breath of a hair. Mamash on every small, small, small movement from the will of Hashem Yitbarach immediately. There are judgments, but why? Why there are judgments over there? Because that over there, if you're doing something wrong, immediately you disrespect HaKadosh Baruch Hu because you're so close. I gave you that, we compared it once to a person that steal an apple from the market. It's not such a big crime, but if you steal the same apple, exactly the same apple from the table of the king, from the plate of the king, it's gonna look very bad. Because you've done that to the king. So when you're so close to the king, you're so close to Hashem Yitbarach, so it's a lot more important that you're going to cl be clean, that you're going to be straight, that you're never going to lie, that you're not going to move from the will of Hashem Yitbarach. But actually all of the avodah, all of the effort that we have is only to cancel our will to the will of Hashem Yitbarach. And it doesn't mean to drop your own will. Adraba, if you're doing cancelling your will to the will of Hashem, then Hashem is cancelling other people's will to your will. What it means that you still have a will. Means how you're gonna know what's your will and what's the will of Hashem. For that we have that gift of Hidbodadut. That in the Hidbodadut you're gonna clarify, you're gonna work on that. To know what's the truth Hashem. What do you want from me Hashem? And you're gonna pray on that. You're gonna ask on that. You're gonna beg on that. You're gonna cry. You're gonna crawl. Mamash, you're gonna do whatever you can until you're gonna find out what Hashem wants from me. I have a friend in the yeshiva that he made thousands of hours of Yidbodedut on a certain issue. Thousands of hours of Yidbodedut on that issue. And he's got doubts. Now he's got doubts. Maybe Hashem doesn't want those prayers. Maybe those are not the right prayers. When it's happening. It's happening when you're one step from that door. Yetzirah cannot stand the fact that soon you're going to receive it. So he's putting all of his powers to push you down to sadness, to frustration to thoughts, to doubt. Only because you can now just grab it. It's under your nose. Now Yetzirah cannot stand it. Now Yetzirah wants you to be tired. Now Yetzirah wants you to fall. Now Yetzirah wants you to stop praying. Finally that you're going to stop. Because against prayers there's nothing to do. Because even the angels cannot lift the prayers to the place that the, the prayers are rising to to the place of Hashem Yitbarach, to the crown of Hashem. Just the angels are making those prayers to make an oath that they're going to go to the place that they need to go, to the crown of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and they're going alone. No angel can go to that place. And your prayers, when they're going, it's you. You yourself is climbing. Because the spirit goes out when you talk. Means that your prayers are you. It's your spirit. It's your soul that revealed itself. And the soul of the person, this is the main part of the person. So if you're praying and praying and praying, 
you're there, you're with Hashem. You are with Hashem in a place that even the angels cannot reach. And the only problem is lack of faith, that we cannot understand it, how important we are. This is the work, this is the effort, this is the job of Yetzirah to make everyone feel weak. That everyone gonna fall to despair, to sadness, to feel I'm the worst one, for me it's not going, I'm doing it but I'm trying. You don't know what you achieved. You don't have the eyes to see. But the righteous people, they do. They have those holy eyes to see what you achieved. This is why when they see you, they're so happy. They see huge things that you achieved. They see how good you are. You don't see it. But you need to believe to the Chachamim that are telling you that you're so good, that you are good, that you are perfect, that you're amazing, that you're achieving huge things. Huge things with your tefillot, with your prayers. Look how many years, how many generations Am Israel are working hard and learning Torah and they're not achieving what they should achieve already the Geulah. Why? Because they cannot go out from that circle, from that block that they have that they don't believe in themselves. They're always chasing after themselves and blaming themselves and feel so low and so disgraced. But HaKadosh Baruch Hu Himself is praising us. And if you're going to believe in yourself, it's written, Im ta'aminu, ta'amenu. If you're going to believe, they're going to believe you. When you now go to sell something and you don't believe in your product, in yourself, people cannot buy it from you. You're mumbling, you're not talking. You don't have the words, the confidence. But if the Rabotenu, Rabotenu in the Gemara Akdosha, and righteous people, and especially Rabbi Nachman in Breslev, and Rav Shalom, and also pushing me to tell you that again and again and again, that the truth is that your prayers are being answered, just you cannot see it yet, that every prayer is important, that every prayer is going up and carving a path for all of Am Israel. If you're just going to believe in that, what you're going to do? Just going to keep on praying. You're just going to believe in yourself more and more and more and going to go again to the field and again. And if you saw that you haven't achieved it yet, you're just going to go and pray more and more and more and more. And if it's going to take you five years to achieve what that you want, is it so long? Is it so long? Five years? In five years, you're going to have what that you pray on. In five years. If you're really going to know that in five years you're going to have it, you're going to be very relaxed now. Even that you want it today. But if you have a guarantee, a promise, that in five years you have it. 100%. You have it in five years. Don't cry anymore. This is it. You have it. You're going to be very relaxed. Even that you need it now. Craziness. Mamash, you have to have it. In five years you're going to get it. You have a guarantee. You're going to be very relaxed now. Very relaxed. So be relaxed and go and pray and in less than five years you're going to achieve it today if you're going to listen to the voice of Hashem the voice of Hashem is telling you I love you the voice of Hashem is telling you I love you more than you can imagine I want to answer you more than you want to be answered Hashem is in exile not we we don't have no exile we have everything we need we're eating, we're drinking, we have friends around us, we have everything, we're in Eretz Israel. The only problem that the person has is mental problems that he's got inside of himself. Thoughts and craziness and downs and sadnesses and nonsense, nothing. No problems at all. No real problems at all. And when you realize that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with you, this is it. No stress anymore. No anxieties anymore. No fears. Hashem is here. Really, Hashem is here. Again and again, I'm going to tell you. Open the book of Tehillim. You're going to see a person, a Jew, that is serving Hashem Barach, And he is not blaming himself on nothing. He sees only good at himself. He is praising himself from the first chapter to the last, all of the time. Maybe three times he is saying, Khatati, Aviti, Pashati. This is it. 
All of the rest he's saying, I'm Hasid, I'm listening to you, me and you, we're fighting, we're doing good, I'm good, I haven't done nothing, I'm not doing nothing bad, I'm just, I love your Torah, I want your Torah, I love Am Israel, I'm running for them, I'm praying all day long, he's so only good at himself. Why? Because his soul was illuminating, he saw the light of his own soul, the light of Hashem. He had confidence in himself that a 13 years old boy can stand in front of Goliath and kill him. 17. Sorry. 17. 17. I don't know nothing. Can stand in front of Goliath and kill him. Why? Because he cursed Hashem. Goliath was cursing Hashem and this is it and he's going to kill him. He doesn't see nothing in his eyes. This is it. He's going to kill him. He, I cursed Hashem. This is it. Why you cannot believe in yourself? Why you don't have that courage? Another point. All book of Tehillim is written Shem Hashem. David HaMelech is saying Adonai, David HaMelech is saying Elohim, David HaMelech is calling Hashem Itbarach in his name. Why are you afraid to do that? Why in your Hidbodet Yot you're saying Hashem, please, Hashem, Hashem. Why are you not calling Hashem in his name? Why are you not calling Hashem in his name? La'alachai it's allow. You know that la'alachai it's allow. La'alachai you allow to talk to Hashem like you talk to your best friend. When you're calling Hashem Itbarach, you should call Hashem Itbarach. Why you don't dare to call Hashem Itbarach in His name? Why you don't believe in Hashem? That in the field you can tell Him, Adonai, Shemana Bekoli, Tiena Oznecha Kashuvot Lekol Tachanunai, Please Hashem, listen to my voice, that your ear is going to be open to listen to me when I'm begging to you, Ribono Shel Olam. Why? Why are you afraid? You don't have self-confidence. You still don't realize that you talk to Hashem. You still don't realize that Hashem is with you. That you can talk to Him like you talk to your best friend. What we're saying all of the time? That all of the people in the world, Ikru Bishmech, are going to call you in your name. They're going to and we're not going to. His name is not Hashem. He's got a name. Call Him in His name. Call him! Self-confidence, it's the basic thing. This is the foundation, it's the beginning. To believe in your tefillot. To believe that Hashem is with you. When you read the verses of Tehillim, you can mention the name of Hashem. But when you're praying your own tefillot, that they are similar to the tefillot of Tehillim. It's exactly what the David HaMelech was doing. He was allowed, he had a certain permission to call Hashem in his name. And we don't have that permission to call Hashem in his name. Why? What's the difference between us to David HaMelech? No difference. For what he wrote the book of Tehillim, he had those prayers. He didn't have to write them down. He wrote them down that we're going to learn from him what that he was doing. That we're going to do the same. Not that we're going to read the Tehillim. Also good. But that we're going to do it but that we ought. That we're going to go to the fields. That we're going to go to the woods, to the desert. That we're going to scream to Hashem, save us, help us. For that. So why you wrote the name of Hashem so many times? That you're going to have that courage to do that also. That you're going to believe that Hashem Midbarach is with you in the field. And you're going to feel so not comfortable to call Hashem in His name now today in the field. Every one of you are going to try to do that. And you're going to feel so ashamed to do that. It's so nice to see Am Israel growing. Slowly, slowly. Oh Hashem. In the beginning you feel shame, you don't sure, you don't count on yourself. After a while, you're going to feel sure, you're going to feel really, it's allowed. The safek, the doubts are the husk of Amalek, that Amalek <coughs> is coming to the weak people of Am Israel, and he's biting them, and he's breaking them, and he's jumping all over them, and he's kicking them, and he's pushing them. Let them feel so bad so low, contaminated, so far, so what? So you're far, so you're weak, so what? So what? So Hashem doesn't love you, Hashem loves you. Adraba, Hashem loves you more. Because Hashem's love is coming out of compassion, out of mercy. And when He sees that you have your lackings, He's got more mercy on you. And He wants to help you more. 
and he's coming lower and lower to save you. This is him. This is Hashem. So Adraba, if you fail, you need to know for sure Hashem is going to be here with me. For sure. Out of His loving kindness. To count on yourself and to go. And we have that power not because we're strong. Just because that Hashem is so kind. And we should count on Him. And we're going to reveal the faith in the world. And we're going to go and going to conquer the world with that faith. And we're going to illuminate this, those faiths to, uh, to all of the nations. That everyone is going to call Him in His name. And we are, how you say that, required. We need it. People need us. People need us. People need us. We don't need nothing. What we need? What do we need for our Avodat Hashem? Small things. <coughs> but for the people, for Am Israel, we're asking for the big things. What we need? Everyone wants to have a little bit of quiet, an apartment. Some, everyone can achieve that. Everyone can achieve his own needs. It's not such a big deal. The thing that we're praying on, it's things for all of Am Israel. Those huge things we need. And look how many difficulties there are on that. But now that we're strengthening ourselves to believe that our prayer has been answered and we saw and every one of us, everyone that had it but the duty, know that Hashem is listening to him. Everyone that have a very small experience with it but the duty, saw Hashem already. You saw Hashem in your parnasah. You saw Hashem in miracles in your private life. You saw Hashem answers to you through things. So you saw Hashem. So if you saw Hashem on small things, means that Hashem just trying to give you confidence to believe in the huge things that you're going to... Put your mind, your selfish will a little bit aside and go and pray on Am Israel. That you're going to have that faith to believe in yourself, to go and to open the way for all of Am Israel. That thousands of Jews, thousands of people from the world are going to walk after you in that path that you opened. In that path that you opened. It's written on the 12 tribes that they were praying and everyone had a different path that his, um, that his prayers went up through that gate. And they created those gates. Who created? The 12 holy tribes. The children of Yaakov, they were praying everyone from his point, special private point that he had, and they were praying with so much intention that they carved a path until they created a gate that all of their children his prayers are rising through that gate. The Rabbi Milubavitch said, and I opened the 13th gate. Rabbi Milubavitch said it. And I opened the 13th gate. What it means? That you can open a gate by yourself also. This is what it means. The Rabbi Milubavitch he was very special. He opened the 13th gate, no doubt about it. And you can do it also. This is why the Rebbe bin Lubavitch told you that. Not because that he was arrogant, that wanted to praise himself, that people are going to worship him, people are going to believe that he was the Mashiach. No, no. He never had it in mind. He wants people to believe in themselves. He wants you to believe that you can achieve things. The righteous people are very innocent, very tmimim. They don't even think about all of the foreign thoughts that you have while they're talking. One of the Avrechim in the yeshiva went one to, once to Arav Shalom and told him, Arav, why all of the time? It's a different story. I told you that. Uh, I told you a different story that starts the same. Actually, when I'm thinking about it, it's the same Avrech, but in a different time also. He came to Arav and told him, Arav, why every time after I'm talking to you have so many confusions? I th and then he explained to him and he told him, Arav, I feel like you have bad thoughts on me. All of the time I feel like maybe I wasn't Yotze Chova fulfilling my obligation to you. I wasn't Yotze Chova. Maybe, maybe you looked and now you see all of my defects, all of my pgamim, all of my lackings and you say to yourself I cannot talk to him anymore. He doesn't understand me. Why do I have all of those? So that Avrech came to Arav and asked him maybe Arav himself really have those bad thoughts on him. Maybe, maybe Arav do you really think that that's it? So Rav answered to him. He said, those are your imaginations. I see only good. You have tons of imaginations, every one of us. 
Those imaginations are those kitrugim. Those are the obstacles that we have as a Baalet Shuva to achieve the purpose, the Tachlit. Yetzirah doesn't want you to achieve the purpose. He wants you to give up. He wants you to fall. So he finds every t trick that he can find to make you feel bad with yourself, horrible with yourself, that you're going to feel so low, so down, that you're going to say, all right, I'm going to stop. Because no one can stop you. Just you can give up. But really, no one can stop you. Because you have a free choice. So you can choose. And if you're going to choose to be righteous, you're going to be righteous. Because in that path that the person wants to walk, in that path, the wa helping you to walk, the walking you in that path. So if you're going to choose to bring the Geula to Am Israel, to be kosher, to be clean, to be pure, to close, close your eyes, to pray to Hashem, to do whatever, you're going to do that. Just Yetzirah, going to fight. And what are you going to fight about? The, to try to convince you to give up. What it means to make you feel bad with yourself, to feel low. So he's going to fail you in a certain defect, a pgam, I don't know what. And by that pgam, you're going to say to yourself, this is it, I ruin, I spoil it all. Now Hashem is not looking at me, look what's written in the Zohar Kadosh, And you don't understand the Zohar Kadosh. And you don't really know what Hashem is thinking about you. And you're just talking Lashon Hara on Hashem Itbarach now. And you're thinking horrible thoughts on Hashem Itbarach. You're blaming Hashem Itbarach that he's got Mida of anger, that he's got mid bad Midot. That now he's going to revenge, and now that he's not looking at you, and you're blaming him. You're talking Lashon Hara on Hashem Itbarach. Yetzirah is attempting you to think bad things on the Creator, on the one that gives you life. On the one that was waiting for you all of your life. On the one that gave you hey here Huret Shuva while you were really contaminated, while you were very, very far. And to those places he came down and he didn't care about nothing. And you saw that in those days. But now suddenly, why? Because the Yetzirah is fighting. And fighting more and fighting more. And he doesn't want you to be happy. He doesn't want you to accomplish, to achieve your goal. Even Avraham Avinu. He's sitting in the entrance to the tent and he cannot get in. After that he circumcised himself in the age of 99. And he's putting so much effort in his Avodat Hashem and nothing is going on right. Nothing. Kechomayom, the heat is on and he cannot go in. He cannot enter into the tent, into the tent of Torah. He cannot. Who? Avraham Avinu. He cannot. Who Yoshev Petach Ha'oel. He's in the entrance of the tent. In the heat of all lusts and desires, it's written in the Kutah Alachot. He cannot enter. He needs to believe. And he's talking to Hashem. He needs to strengthen yourself to keep on believing in Hashem in Barach until the last moment. Until the last moment. That Hashem is good. That everything is good. That you are being answered now in the present. You're developing and you're growing. Asher kideshanu b'mitzvotav, you become more holy and more holy. When we're saying, Baruch atah Hashem elokenu melech haolam, Asher kideshanu b'mitzvotav, that He made us in the past holy with His mitzvot, v'tzivanu, and now He commanded us, now in the present, litatef b'tzitzit, laniach tefillin, it's another one. It's on top of all of what that He gave us until now. You bringing, you preparing your thoughts to realize how many good things Hashem gave me until now and now He's giving me another mitzvah, another purification, another gift, another one. And now you're going to wrap yourself with a talit with such joy because you're going to listen to the words that you're saying in the bracha because you realize how much Hashem is good, how many good things you're doing, how many mitzvot you're keeping. The smallest one of them all, tzitzit. Tzitzit. You realize what it means that you have tzitzit? Kippah. Beard. You're in Eretz Israel. <laughs> How many huge things. You're saying brachot on food. You know what's the difference between the food that you eat without brachot and the food that you eat with brachot? It's like the difference between food and waste. No connection. This is an foods for animal. This is food for human being. Or that you've been fed by food of animals. The demons control on that food. 
that makes you so angry and frustrated and sad and fallen and confused and with more lusts and more desires all that is cleaning you and purifying you and bringing you closer to Hashem it Barach it depends in the Bracha in the Bracha you separate all of the husks and 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 and, and dark forces from those fruits and, and food and you just purified it and qualified it to be food for human beings and now you can eat it it's yours now you can eat it yours means fit for you good for you healthy for you not stolen not with a curse we need to believe in ourselves and to believe in ourselves that we're able to follow the footsteps of righteous people righteous people are not wasting their time with us they're telling us things that they see with their eyes, with their holy eyes, that we can achieve. Rabbeinu said, I'm going to make you to be exactly like I am. Kamoni mamash. Rabbeinu said it. This is it. Now you should believe in that. Rabbeinu said, I achieved it from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, That everyone that's just going to remember me, become to be like a baby that's just born. You need to believe in that. If you have that faith in Chachamim, you're going to believe in what that Rabbi Nachman Ibrasev said. And now we mentioned Rabbi Nachman. And all of us, we thought now about Rabbi Nachman. Now, it's like we reborn. You don't have no sins. This is it. You're clean as a baby. You need to believe in that. If you're going to believe in that, now you're clean like a baby. If you don't believe in that, you have your imaginations. Rabbeinu called Yetzer Ara Koach Medame, power of imagination. So the Yetzirah still have control on you, in your imaginations. But not really in power. Really, he cannot touch you. You have a free choice. You're a free man. You're a Ben Chorin. Every day you're saying, Boch Shalah Sani Goy, Boch Shalah Sani Aved, Boch Shalah Sani Shah. You're free. You're on top of everything. You're on top of everything. You're above everything. And like we learned last week, that a person can follow those footsteps of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. That Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he saw that a human being being created from that verse, Adamele Elyon. I'm going to look like Hashem. Means you can believe in yourself that you can cancel yourself totally to Hashem. To become, to be like Hashem. Even a lie has to be based on something. Even a lie. If the Yetzirah told the people, the, the Adam Arishon told him, Vitem ke Elokim, you can become to be like God. There is a certain side that really you can listen to that. You can understand. From the lie you can hear the truth. Just he wanted them to push the hour. To be in, a, in stress. No, alright, now I have to become to be like God. He saw that really they're so connected. And he had that horrible jealousy that he wanted to become, to be higher than them. He wanted to ruin the good thing that they had. That they were Mamash, so close to Hashem. The Nezer Abriah, the top of the creation. He saw that he went crazy. So he told him, he pushed, he pushed them to, to run too fast. To achieve what that was already belonged to them. If you're stealing, you're stealing from yourself. If you're taking something without bracha, without praying on it, you're taking what that was already belongs to you. You're taking what that was belongs to you. So you just need to take one step back, to relax, to pray on it. Give me everything with prayers. Like Rav Shalom said, you have to have a lot of courage to do that, but please be brave. Say to Hashem, I don't want to receive nothing until I'm going to pray on that enough. And let me pray. And let me pray. Because if you receive things without praying on them, those things are damaging you. So it's good to pray. It's good to wait. It's good to wait. They tell you to wait. They tell you to wait because they want to give you what that you want to receive. What that you want to achieve. They just want to give it to you. So for that you need to wait. So tell Hashem it Barach, I want to wait. I want to accept your yoke of heaven. I want to accept the way that you leads me. I want to listen to you. I want to listen to the voice of Chachamim. So give me the right prayers. Give me the patience. Give me the power to hold on. Give me the simcha. 
like that righteous man that said to Akadosh Baruch Hu, or that you're going to give me that da'a, that wisdom to understand that I don't need a coat in that freezing cold of Ukraine of 200 or 250 years ago in the winter, or that you're going to give me a coat for now. <laughs> One of them I have to, or that you let me understand that I don't need a coat, that I don't need Parnassah, that I don't need Shalom Bayit, that I don't need a house, that I don't need a wife, that I don't need um, whatever. That I don't need to be a Talmid Chacham, that I don't need to learn Torah, or that you let me understand it, that I don't need nothing if you don't want me to have it, so probably I don't need it. Or that for now, supply me the things that I think that I need. This is an honest prayer. This is a prayer that comes out from an honest heart, from a pure heart, from a heart that wants to serve Hashem. And we all have those thoughts inside of us. The reason that we are here, it's because that we want to serve Hashem so much, but we don't know how to do that. The way to do it, it's to listen to the Chachamim that are teaching you, to count on them, on everything that they tell you. Even if they're telling you on right that it's left and on left that it's right. Even that you think that you have to finish Shas so much. And Chachamim are telling you, go to the field. If you're going to open the Shulchan Aruch, you're going to see that Rabbi Yosef Karo is writing in the Shulchan Aruch. Shulchan Aruch, it's not a book of Hasidut. Rabbi Yosef Karo wasn't from the students of Abal Shem Tov. Rabbi Yosef Karo wrote a book of Halachot. In that book of Halachot, twice he's bringing that Gemara, that it's not his way to bring Gemarot. In the Shulchan Aruch, you're going to see it's not his way to bring Gemarot. He's bringing only the Psak Halakha, bringing the Psak Halakha. Twice he's bringing the same Gemara, that in that Gemara is written that Hasidim Rishonim, the first Hasidim, were preparing themselves one hour before of Tfila to the Tfila, and then praying one hour, and then after that one hour, Shmona Esre, they were landing for another hour. Means three hours every prayer. Over there the Gemara is asking, so if they're praying nine hours every day, three prayers times three hours, nine hours every day, where they have Torah, where they have Parnassah. So the Gemara is answering, because the Dar Hasidim Rishonim, because they're serving Hashem Barach in such a Mesirut Nefesh, in such a wonderful Hasidut, that they're praying with all of their heart. This is that Hasidut that they're doing now. The praise is those nine hours of tefillah every day. So, Toratan Mishtameret, their Torah being protected, being saved, means they don't forget nothing, and they're growing in the Limud Torah, even from small amounts of Limud. If you're going to compare two, three, nine hours a day to someone else that learns 20 and, and 21 hours a day, so they're learning very small amounts of time. And their Parnasa Midbarechet, also the money being blessed, means the Shulchan Aruch. Rabbi Yosef Karo, why you bring it twice? Then he's bringing it twice. Why you bringing it twice? Because he wants each and every one of us to follow the Hasidim Rishonim, to pray with all of our hearts. Because the Torah that you learn is wonderful, but if it's not bringing you to believe in Hashem Barach, it doesn't worth nothing. You can see huge Talmidei Chachamim that are acting like criminals in the world that they are naval birshut Torah, that they are sinning, that they don't see nothing, they don't see people, they don't see human beings, they don't see the rules of the Torah that they know by heart. They're twisting and changing everything according to their selfish will. You see that? And they have tons of Torah. That this is that samavet that we talked about. Poison. Naset lo samavet. You haven't purified yourself. How are you going to purify yourself? You need to purify your heart. How are you going to purify your heart? Which effort you should put on your heart to purify your heart? It's prayer. And they're not praying. They don't have the heart to pray. How can they have the heart to pray? If all day long they're thinking about themselves and they're learning Torah only to create more honor and respect and make more money and I don't know what, to be more wise that they're going to be bigger wizards, I don't know what. Only because they're contaminating from the beginning and they're not doing tshuva. 
Tshuva is to know that you're horrible. Tshuva is to know that you're a disgrace. Tshuva is to know that you're zero, that you're nothing. That you're in the hands of Hashem to be humble. This is Tshuva. Tshuva is to confess. How you can confess on your Avonot if you don't have one hour every day? If you don't have one hour, that in that one hour you're checking your day. Do you remember everything that you've done? That you can confess only on, on your Avonot? Do you remember? If today you mistaked on something in Shacharit, if you mistaked on something, if you saw a bad sight in the Mikveh, you remember that in the evening when you're doing the Vidu in Mincha, can you confess on, the, on, on bad eyesights in the Mikveh? And in the streets, and conversations, and on Lashon Ara, on Avak Lashon Ara, dust of Lashon Ara. How you can remember all of those if you're not used to judge yourself daily and to do that vidu of one hour every day judging yourself and checking yourself where are you holding in Avodat Hashem? And what's your Yetzirah up to today? And Rabbi Nathan said, in the day that I realized exactly how the Yetzirah is working with me, in that day the Yetzirah changed all of his ways with me. And suddenly he came from a different door from a different place, you couldn't re recognize him. The only way to recognize him is to judge yourself every day. To ask yourself, was I close to Hashem Barach today, this morning? Was I remember Hashem Barach when I woke up? When I said, Modeh Ani Lefanecha, was I thinking about Hashem? When I said, Modeh Ani Lefanecha, was I thanking Hashem? Hashem was there. In my eyes, in my mind, was Hashem there when I was thanking Him? When I said Hashem, Sfatai Tiftach, when I said Hashem, was Hashem there? Was I thinking about Hashem? How can you come to those wonderful understanding without Tshuva? And Tshuva have to be daily. If not, it means that you hold yourself like that you're... Most of the day I'm clean, 90% of my life I'm clean, and once in a while... Always a person has to see himself that he's half guilty and half, half innocent. It's a Mishnah. You have to hold yourself 50-50. So 50-50 means you have to check 50% of your time. Every day you have to judge yourself. You have to look. You have to check. How are you sleeping? How are you eating? How are you talking? How are you thinking? How are you behaving to people? How you talk? You have to judge yourself. And by that confession, Rabbeinu is promising each and every one of us that He's going to lead us in the path that comes out of the root of our soul. That He's going to bring us to the purpose. Like Rabbeinu said, HaKadosh Baruch Hu will not going to do that to me to take one of my people before of His time. We have that promise based on that confession. Based on counting on Rabbeinu HaKadosh. And even if a person is going to go every day to the field and going to do vidui, but he's not doing it in front of Rabbeinu, means he's not bonding himself to Rabbeinu. He's not doing vidui lifne Talmid Chacham in front of a Talmid Chacham that it's Rabbeinu HaKadosh. Just he is doing tshuva, he will not going to accomplish the tshuva that he's looking for. He will not. Because Rabbeinu told us that from the moment that the Kadosh Baruch Hu sent a righteous man that's going to be the leader of that generation, the generation cannot do tshuva without him. In the generation of Moshe Rabbeinu, even if a person had millions on millions of, of golden coins, he couldn't build a Mishkan. Just only Moshe mekimet a Mishkan, builds a Mishkan. Only Moshe. You have more money, more gold, more, more silver. Korach. Had 800, how many we said? 850 donkeys that were carrying the keys to the treasures of Korach. Of, 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 of Korach. 850 donkeys carrying keys. Keys to the treasures. <laughs> this is what we're saying. Ashilke Korach. Be rich as Korach. He had tons of money. He couldn't achieve nothing. Couldn't achieve nothing until Hashem say you're going to build a Mishkan. You, money will not going to help you. You need to have the merit. You need that Hashem going to declare on you. There are people that are millionaires. They don't have the merit to use their own money. They cannot touch their own money. It's sitting under the, 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 the mattress and they cannot touch it. 
They cannot touch it. They try. Tell them, try. Try to touch your own money. He cannot. He's got such a huge angel blocking him. He cannot touch his own money. He's a prisoner in the jail of his own lust and desires and he cannot touch what that belongs to him. He cannot. And another person that he can be poor even and he's going and giving and giving and giving and all of the time from every amount of money that he receives he's sharing and he's giving half, 80%, 100% and he gives because he likes it. In the end of the life he's gonna give millions of, of, of golden coins for charity and someone else that had millions, really had them, didn't give nothing. Think about the disgrace. Think about what you can achieve. And by what? By wanting. Wanting. By praying. By asking. Let me help. Let me do things. Let me do good things. Let me give charity. Let me help those people. Let me build a bit midrash. People that want. People that have will. They're achieving what they want. They're achieving. We need to cancel ourselves to Chachamim that are telling us, believe in yourself. You're going to believe in yourself, people are going to believe in you. You're going to pray, you're going to be answered. Pray. Keep on praying. Push a lot of effort. Put, put a lot of effort. Push. Push to the place that you want to come. To those purpose that you put in front of your eyes. Believe in yourself. Believe that Hashem Barach, if He put those thoughts in your heart, those are the thoughts that you need to follow. If you see that you're doing something wrong, that you make people sad, that you make people sorry, that you're damaging, alright, this is the time to check yourself to do tshuva. But if you're just not succeeding yet, it doesn't mean you're wrong. Rav Shalom once told me the reason that the, he told me, I, if we see that we have obstacles in our way, it means that we're on the right way. <coughs> it cheered him up on a certain subject that we talked about, that we saw that we had obstacles. It cheered him up. He said, alright, Bo Hashem, I see we're on the right way. It means that, alright, this is the right way to keep on praying on that. Wonderful. You see, you have, Yetzara doesn't like it. If Yetzara just supply and supply and gives and gives, so there's something wrong with it. How you can believe in yourself? If you're going to talk to yourself, and you're going to judge yourself, and you're going to check, who am I? Then you're going to realize that you're all good, that your real intentions inside are pure. You're going to see it in the it but the dut. You're going to observe on yourself. Why am I doing it? Because I want to do good. Why I'm even on your failures, you're going to judge yourself. Why was I failing? Why I was angry? Why I was talking you, the, the The worst thing you can see I was afraid. This is the worst thing you can reveal on yourself is that you have a fear that you were afraid. This is it. You felt like you were in a certain danger and you were afraid. And if you're going to investigate a little bit where it came from, what's the beginning of it, the root of it, you're going to realize that it's from your childhood, from your parents, from something. There is a reason for, for that fear. You've been hurt on that subject once or twice or more. And this is it. You're a hurt person. You feel bad. You're afraid. And this is it. And this is why today you had your downs. You were falling. Why it's hard for you to wake up in the morning. Why it's hard for you to smile to every person, to count on people. All of those things are coming from a certain reason. If really you're going to look inside with normal eyes, not even with good eyes. Just look for the truth. You're going to see that you're good. And when you're going to realize, really, you're going to see that light of your own neshama, that you are good, you're going to understand that Hashem is with you. Hashem is good. So He will be with me. He is always with me. He helped me until today. For sure He's going to help me forever. And then you feel confidence. And now you can pray more. Because if you know that there is someone generous in front of you, you have more courage to talk to Him. You can talk to Him. You have an experience with Him that He's helping. So. You can talk to him for more. We're going to stop talking Lashon Ara and thinking Lashon Ara about Hashem, about the righteous people. Just going to understand that all of those confusions and all of those bad thoughts are coming only, only because the Yetzirah doesn't want us to achieve the purpose. And from that huge battle, huge fight that we see that Yetzirah is putting, we're going to understand that we're so close. 
that he's fighting because we're about to achieve what that we're praying on. That Rabbeinu HaKadosh is helping us and HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants to help us. And all of the righteous people are supporting us and pushing us forward to succeed. And I'm telling you that again and again, a boy side, there are a lot more English speakers, Jews in the world than Hebrew. More than half of Am Israel are waiting for us. This small, tiny English program have to explode. Mamash, we need to reach every point in the globe. We need to cover the world, each and every one of us. Wake up, all of you, to work with your talents, to work on yourself, on your own, to do things by yourself. Ask for a blessing and move on, move forward. Believe in yourself. You have huge light inside of you, each and every one of us. We have huge light. And we have to keep on doing and keep on developing and keep on growing. And not to stop. Not in the days and not in the nights. You see, you have five minutes of quiet prayer. Ribbon Shalallah, bring the Geula, make more hafatza, more distribution. Help us to give more, to hand more books of Rav Shalom. Let us give more CDs. Let me, let me record classes. Let me make CDs. Let me make, I'm going to upload classes in YouTube. I'm going to open a class. Ribbon Shalallah, give me the courage to go, to talk in the Kotel Amaravi, to talk in the Tayelet. I don't know what, in Midrach of Ben Yehuda, to go with my guitar, to go, I don't know, to make music, to take Ben Ayao Cohen took his puppet and went to Mamila's mall. What do you want more than that? Let me take my puppet and go and talk to people. This is the right way. This is the right way to cover all places, to go to the people that are close to you, to your neighbors, to make chukbait, to talk in the Bet Knesset, to open in Shabbos Sipure Masiyot, and to start to talk. What do you need to tell Am Israel? Hashem loves you. Hashem is smiling to you. Hashem is accepting your prayers. Hashem is waiting to you. You don't need to be a Talmud Chacham for that. Just share from what that you're going through. This is what people need to hear. They need to believe in themselves. They don't need to believe in you. You don't need to be a Talmud Chacham that they're going to succeed in life. Adraba, your failures and the fact that you're holding on, they're going to give them a lot more power to continue. With you they can communicate. If you're going to be another Talmud Chacham in her, Somewhere in the, the far away, they cannot reach you, they cannot talk to you anymore. Oh, you become to be Talmud Chacham now. This is it. They need you exactly how that you are in the place that you are at. They need you. Thank you, Rabbi Yisai Chazak Ubaruch.